Magandang hapon po, Pilipinas. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar for a cause, Teaching and Learning Tips and Transitioning to Virtual Learning. Itong webinar for a cause po ay nag-start uh, last week. Um, and I hope that you're, all, you're also supporting our causes and projects. One of our projects is Lapis ng Pangarap. Um, kung saan tinulungan po natin yung mga students sa Anda, Pangasinan. There are 23 schools and about 10,000 students po yung natulungan natin dahil sa suporta ninyo sa lapis ng pangarap campaign. Another project that we have initiated po is We Are In This Together. Kung saan nakapag-raise po tayo ng 473,000 para sa school sa Anda, Pangasinan. Uh, ang video po ay nasa YouTube if you want to watch those uh, two projects, Lapis ng Pangarap and uh, We're In This Together. We also started the Inspiring Minds Transforming Lives campaign. Uh, tinulungan po natin yung mga students and teachers ng Malong Elementary School. Nakapag-raise din po tayo ng 140,000 pesos. So if you're willing to help our causes and projects, please uh, contact Celso Academy at gmail.com. Okay? Para po sa ating uh, webinar ngayon, ito po yung ating agenda and learning targets. We will be sharing the DepEd plans in transitioning to blended learning. We have invited one uh, teacher from private school and a uh, supervisor from Anda Pangasinan uh, as well. I will also be showing you the four essential areas in transitioning to virtual learning. Uh, three months ago, last March, we transitioned to virtual learning here in Singapore. And I will be sharing you some um, experiences that I had during that three months of virtual learning. Fourth, I will also share you some online tools in virtual classes. I use Google Classroom, Zoom, and Notability, specifically for math classes. I can't imagine teaching a math class without using Notability, so I highly recommend that. And the fifth um, target for today, I will also be sharing you some online curriculum and assessment tools for not just for math, but also for English, science, and social studies. All right, um, I think two months ago, our DepEd chief, Leo, uh, Leonor Briones uh, mentioned about the blended learning. So ang mga teachers po ngayon, I know are very busy creating modules and preparing for the school opening on August 24th. It's blended learning. I think walang face-to-face -face, uh, this school year. So para magkaroon pa tayo ng more information about blended learning, nag-invite po tayo ng uh, two teachers, actually one, one teacher from a uh, private school, Ray Avellano, I will uh, have her join right now. And we also have, and we also have a supervisor, school, public school supervisors from Anda Pangasinan, Dr. Edwin Ampler. Good afternoon, Ray and uh, Sir Edwin. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Sir Danny. Good afternoon, Sir Danny. Yeah, good afternoon sa lahat ng ating televiewers. Um, let's start with Ray. Ray, pwede paki-introduce mo na yung sarili mo and then after that, Sir Edwin. Uh, okay. I'm Ray Villaruel. I came from, I'm actually, I'm teaching in one of the private schools in Manila, uh, Chinese Filipino School. That's it. Thank you, Ray. Ray is also my bachelor's at Philippine Normal University, para kaming batch 2000. Yeah, uh, and then next, Sir Edwin, could you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, Sir Gianni. Good afternoon. I am Edwin Ampler, a public schools district supervisor here at SDO1 Pangasinan, particularly in Anda District. Yeah, see, Sir Edwin po, I kilala ko since I was in high school. Uh, naging guest speaker siya when I graduated in high school and also he worked with me uh, with different projects in the, Philipp in the Philippines, particularly in Pangasinan, like Lapis ng Pangarap, uh, Inspiring Minds, Transforming Lives, and so on. 
All right. So, ang first question po natin ay, ano po yung plans ng nag-start po tayo sa public school, Sir Edwin? Ano po yung yes, plans sir. ng Anda Pangasinan sa implementation ng blended learning this year? Okay. Uh, we all know that uh, education really must continue and learning does not stop. So, as we face this uh, pandemic because of the COVID-19, definitely education should continue. So, we, we are planning na talagang we will have the blended learning. As of the moment, uh, we are having the remote enrollment of our school learners. We're in, kasabay po ng remote enrollment namin ay yung survey sa mga magulang kung ano yung appropriate na modalities na kakailanganin. Nabanggit po ng aming secretary na wala nga munang face-to-face on August 24. But we can have online. We can have also through television and radio. Yung walang mga internet connection or port signal, we can also have the uh, module, printed materials. As of the moment, and the district is trying its best to catch up with that current trend in education. So we have started, our division has rolled out the application software in the preparation of digitization of learning materials. So na roll out na nito sa mga teachers. Uh, we're having virtual meetings and webinar to the teachers in preparing digitized materials. That's great, Sir Edwin. Uh, dahil nagkakaroon kayo ng uh, training for teachers, I think it's really important na matrain talaga yung mga teachers dahil lahat tayo ay new sa, sa virtual learning. Magkaiba yes. yung teaching in the actual classroom at saka sa virtual learning. So it's really important na uh, sinitrain natin yung ating mga teachers. I'll get back yes. to you, Sir Edwin. Um, sa private school naman, especially sa school ninyo, uh, Ma'am Ray, ano yung plans ninyo to implement the blended learning. Blended learning ba kayo or oh, it's 100% online? Uh, it's blended learning, more on, pero more on online pa rin. So we're going to have a full remote online teaching, so remote learning program. So we will have uh, 40, we're, we're going to concentrate on five five subjects. Actually, the school released information guide regarding the remote learning program to the parents so that they will have the guide. Um, we will have the full implementation of online learning starting from August 3 to December 18. So mostly, we will have the online, the synchronous, synchronous learning session in the morning. So 40 minutes per subject. So that's our plan, 40 minutes per subject. Then we will focus on English, math, science, social studies, Filipino. And since it's a Chinese school, so we're going to have also a Chinese Mandarin classes. Then since it's also a Catholic school, so we will have the religion and character formation. So those are the subjects that the school will have this uh, coming school year. So they will, we will focus on those subjects. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. Um, Sir Edwin, I mentioned in you na you're starting with the enrollment process now in Anda yes. Pangasinan. Uh, yes. In that enrollment process, um, meron bang question doon kung ano yung mas preference ng uh, students and uh, parents? What kind of modality? Uh, what kind of method yung preference nila? Yes, Sir Sagani. Merong sa survey, kasabi ng enrollment, ay uh, yung different modalities na magiging appropriate sa school setting, especially that, you know, you, we already know that Anda is an island uh, district. May mga schools located in an island at meron din sa remote area. So may pagpipilian po sila doon. Pwedeng, meron naman yung mga schools na marireach through internet. May, may mga malalakas din na signal. Yung mga bang, ibang schools din, may mahinang signal. So, Merong option din si parent na mamili doon sa modalities, whether online, whether through, through modules, or through television or radio. Um, another question, Sir Edwin, ay dahil walang face-to-face, -face, so wala talagang option ang mga um, students or parents na, let's say, 10 students na pupunta sa classroom. Is that allowed or 100% uh, walang face-to-face? -face? Uh, 
definitely we will be uh, following the advice from the IETF or the Department of Health observing the protocol. And we're happy that here in ANDA until today, we are COVID free here in ANDA. So we can also have the options also later on if there can also be a combination of a face-to-face -face and two days face-to-face -face and another could be aral din aral sa bahay or we also have yeah. distance learning. But definitely, uh, we, will, we will follow the guidelines from the DOH that are priority really will be the safety and health of our learners. Yeah. Kudos to the LGU and uh, the frontliners in Anda, uh, Pangasinan. Zero case. So congratulations. Yes, sana so lang. far. Yes. Sana magpulituloy yes. na zero case ang, ang Anda. And now let's move on to some possible challenges na napuforsi ninyo sa blended learning. Uh, Ray, sa private school, sa tingin mo, ano yung possible na challenges na may encounter ng teachers and uh, students? Actually, for the school first, since, di ba, alam natin na mostly most businesses closed, so marami talagang parents yung uh, nila ngayon is yung kanilang budget. So kailangan pa lang yung competition among private schools pa lang. So yun pa lang kailangan maibigay mo na agad yung maganda mong plano kasi there's a possibility na since same lang naman yung magiging uh, way of teaching for this school year, there's a possibility na yung mga parents, pipiliin nila yung mas mababang tuition fee. Yun. Yeah. So that's one of the challenges na possible na ma-encounter ng school. So because of that, there will be decrease in enrollment. So if there will be decrease in enrollment, maapektuhan din yung budget ng school. Actually, for now, naapektuhan na siya because since we're going to deal with the uh, five major subjects together and with Chinese and religion, so the school will also compensate those teachers na hindi magtuturo. So kaya hinahanapan sila ng possible na magiging support nila. So yung budget ngayon na kinakaharap ng school, um, isa, siyang, isa siya sa challenge ng school dahil nga kahit na walang walang ginagawa yung iba or possible na hindi hindi talaga may may gawin for the whole school year kailangan pa ring i-compensate kasi hindi naman nila kasalanan ko ano yung mga nangyari ngayon then one of the challenges pa rin na nakikita natin namin is yung since we're going to have full online so there's a possibility na in the Philippines alam naman natin yung connectivity then yung availability ng gadgets for yeah. each student. Kasi binigay na talaga namin doon sa remote namin na information guide na each student must have his or her own gadget during learning. E kung meron sa isang pamilya, apat yung anak nila. So kailangan talaga tig-iisa sila. Kasi sabay-sabay yun na mangyayari in the morning yung online session. So yun, uh, actually I handled the um, advanced class for this last last week. Ang may nangyari na nga na I'm handling the the one, the one student and his brother nag-aaral din there's a time na nawalan siya ng camera so yun lang yung available sa kanya na gadget dahil nga hindi niya rin magamit yung isang gadget dahil ginagamit din ng kapatid niya so yun po yeah. and uh, another one is same with the public school siguro mas konti lang ng konti sa private is yung number ng students in a class so mm -hmm. in the private we have 40 to 45 students in a class so i think it's a uh, very challenging to monitor yung learnings if we have that uh, big class for the online yeah. learning. Yun yeah. po. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nakapagturo, nakapagturo din ako sa school nila, Ray, dyan sa, dyan sa Manila. And yes, class size is about, about 40 students. And uh, dito ngayon sa Singapore, I think it's easier to manage dahil yung largest class size namin ay 22. Ang smallest class size ko ay 16. So, mas madaling i-manage mm -hmm. kahit na nasa online learning ka or in our case, ang ginamit namin is Zoom classroom. So, mas madaling i-monitor yung uh, progress ng students. So, thank you, Ray. Um, okay. Sir Edwin, what about sa public school? Ano yung uh, nakikita mo na mga challenges na harapin ng teachers at the same time students? Okay. With the implementation of virtual learning, so ang magiging problema talaga namin ay first will be the internet connection. 
Uh, may mga place tayo, special remote barangays na talagang walang signal sa kanilang mga area. Pero hindi naman talaga 100% sa mga schools ay may malakas na internet connection. And of course, uh, with implementation of virtual learning will be of course the availability of gadgets. And of course, yung teachers' skills and perceptions on the use of this gadget. And I'm very glad nga kasi we are preparing for August 24th school opening. We are now having trainings to our teachers on the use of uh, different applications to for us to effectively implement the online learning. And siguro sa gani, we really have to uh, have partners with uh, LGU, with our stakeholders na magkaroon itong mga gadgets na ito to implement virtual learning in our district. Yeah. Uh I've watched some news, I think in Manila, LGU, like Metro Manila, uh, sa Manila in particular, I think mayroong mga gadgets na ipoprovide sa mga students and teachers. Sana all, mm -hmm. no? Sana lahat ng mga, <laughs> ah, sana yes. lahat ng mga uh, LGU ay magkaroon. Uh, kasi napaka-importante talaga na magkaroon ng uh, gadgets. Like para, sa akin, um, in this three months of virtual learning, hindi enough talaga yung isang uh, laptop. Mas maganda na mayroong, so mayroon akong ginagamit na laptop and then mayroon ding iPad. So that way when you're doing explicit instructions sa mathematics, for example, na isusulat mo yung mga step, steps and then the students can follow. So um, yeah, gadgets is really important para sa transition natin sa virtual learning uh, this yes. year. Yes. All right. Um, any last words as Ray and Sir Edwin? Uh, I think we need, uh, last sir. So we are asking for the help of the parents, especially since they are the one who are with their children. So yung guidance, yung monitoring, we need the help of uh, the teachers. Need the help of the parents. Uh, yung sa monitoring po. Hindi magagawa ng mga teachers yan kung sila lang. So nakikiusap kami do sa mga magulang na kung pwede maki maki isa tayo, tumulong tayo kung paano natin ma Papa, lagan up yung learnings for this school year during this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Sir Edwin. Okay, so ka kailangan din talaga ng tulong-tulong magkaisa sa edukasyon. Sabi ko nga sa mga principals and teachers dito sa ANDA, tayo naman ngayon ang magiging frontliners yes. na may bigay ang quality education sa ating mga learners. Dapat talaga ang pagtuturo at pagkatuto ng mga bata ay hindi titigil. Hahanapan natin ang paraan para lalong may, may sulong ang quality education. So, we are also asking our stakeholders to help us for the coming school year with the use of blended learning, online learning, or even with the use of modules. Okay. Maraming salamat uh, Sir Edwin and Ma'am Ray sa insight. Yes, magbayanihan po tayo para sa uh, school year 2020-2021. And um, after this, I will be sharing also my insights and learnings sa implementation ng virtual learning dito sa Singapore. So again, thank you so much uh, Ray and uh, Sir Edwin. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ayan po, narinig po natin yung insights ng isang teacher sa private school and uh, school supervisor sa public school sa Anda, Pangasinan. So again, thank you uh, Sir Edwin and uh, Ma'am Ray Avellano. All right, so now I will be sharing some learnings that I uh, had here in Singapore during the virtual learning from March to, to May, actually first week of June. Um, there's four essential areas na kailangang pagtuon ng pansin ng mga teachers, administrators as well uh, in transitioning to virtual learning. One is 
The first one is the curriculum. Uh, second is content delivery. Third, uh, is common assessments. And the fourth one is communication. Itong apat na to really important para maging successful ang um, uh, virtual learning. So first, let's go into detail. The first one is common curriculum. Ang common curriculum dapat is a collective decision ng school district, school department, and grade level. Less on individual teacher decision. Kasi kung ang individual teachers ang magdi-decide, kung ano yung ituturo, it's possible na magiging iba yung matutunan ng mga estudyante. So, when it comes to standards and curriculum, dapat collective decision ito ng district and school. In our case, sa aming uh, professional learning community in the grade 8, uh, every three years, we revisit our curriculum. And uh, we design our curriculum. Ang ginagamit po namin ay Google Slides. And sa 8th grade groups, Lahat ng estudyante are, all students are receiving the same curriculum across three sides. Ang magkakaiba lang is how you're going to implement the curriculum. But we are using the same curriculum. We are also using the same assessment. So, ngayon na nag-transition po tayo sa, sa virtual learning, kailangan talagang magkaroon ng bayanihan. Divide and conquer. Kasi kung individually ang mga teachers ay mag-create ng module, it takes time to do that. So as much as possible, alimbawa, for example, sa, sa, ANDA, uh, sa ANDA schools, for example, lahat ng Algebra 1 teachers, I recommend that you get together, um, creating professional learning community through, through Google para mag-share kayo ng mga ideas, modules. Uh, this is the time na kailangan talagang magtulungan. Okay? Second, just like I've said dito sa aming school, ang ginagamit naming curriculum para sa Math 8 ay Illustrative Mathematics. Uh, beginning this school year ng August, nag-create kami ng booklet. And in addition to the booklets that we shared to the kids, every unit, meron din kaming Google Slides that we shared on Google Classroom. So meron kaming learning management system kung saan ang mga estudyante can can have, uh, merong silang single uh, platform para, kun, para makuha yung uh, materials na kailangan nila sa unit. So as you can see in this slide, also meron na kaming mga uh, units na designed for the whole year. So nire-revise lang namin siya on a yearly basis kung kailangan merong i-update, things like that. So again, ang curriculum namin ay meron kaming ginagamit na booklets or modules. Uh, I also use Google Slides, and this year, last February, I also started doing um, some math videos. So that's why I, I launched the my YouTube channel, Build to Academy. Ginagamit uh, mga videos to supplement uh, the teaching and learning process in the during the virtual learning class. Second essential area of virtual learning is content delivery. Uh, kagaya ng na-mention ni Sir Edwin and Ma'am Ray, and even our DepEd Secretary, there's multiple, it's blended learning. Pero dito sa Singapore, dito sa Singapore ang aming delivery ay through Zoom. So ang ginagamit ko po ay Zoom. And lahat ng aming lessons ay nakapose sa Google Classroom. So, nandun yung classwork, nandun yung mga videos, nandun yung homework. So, lahat nasa isang uh, learning management system na siya. So, it's a single point access. So, madaling mapuntahan ng mga students at the same time, pati mga parents as well. There are so many tools available uh, sa mga teachers and sa mga students. Uh, so, these are the first five. We have Google Classroom. Hangouts, Meet, Zoom, but I highly suggest na pumili lang ng maximum of three. Kasi sa dami ng mga resources na available, kapag gagamitin ninyo lahat ito, it can be overwhelming sa estudyante. It can also be overwhelming sa teachers. Especially kapag new tayo sa, sa digital learning. So for me, 
ang ginagamit ko sa pag-deliver ng content ay tatlo lang, Google Classroom, Zoom, and ang third one is Notability. I highly recommend these three. Ang Google Classroom ay free, Zoom ay free din siya, ang Notability ay spend uh, 10 Singapore dollars, so about 400 pesos. And it's worth it na gamitin yung Notability app. Akit Google Classroom ang ginamit ko. Why Google Classroom? Ang Google Classroom kasi ay single point of access na siya for all the information, resources, homework, and assessment. Just like Web said, ang Google Classroom, pwede kang mag-create ng assessment. Nandun na rin lahat ng classwork, homework, and assessment. Later on, I'm going to show you a sample uh, Google Classroom, Google Slide na pinost ko sa Google Classroom. And it's easy to use. Madaling uh, i-access ng mga estudyante. So, sa cell sa Google Classroom, ito yung sample classes na create ko. I teach five classes. Meron din akong advisory class with 12 students. So, one advisory class and I have five classes. So, ito yung Google Classroom na i-access ng bawat estudyante. So, pwedeng math, social studies, science. So, lahat ng teachers sa aming school, lahat ay gumagamit ng Google Classroom. So, that way, madaling puntahan ng estudyante and also the parents. So, again, importante na lahat ng teachers are doing the same thing para mas madali at hindi malilito yung mga, uh, mga students. Another important element ng Google Classroom ay you can post the assignments and homework on a daily basis. So, and you can also arrange them by units. Sa aming Math 8 Plus or Algebra 1, meron lang kaming five different units. So, every year, we, start, we started uh, the school year lagging ng start ng August, first week of August. So, Doon ko ipopost yung assignment number one. Nandun na rin yung classwork, nandun na rin yung homework. Lahat nandun na siya. So, one stop shop for the student. Sa Google Classroom also, doon na rin nagsasubmit ng homework yung mga students. So, mabili mong ma-check kung sino ang nag-turn in ng homework, sino ang nag-late na mag-submit ng homework, o kaya sino may missing homework. Uh, with this platform also, you can notify the parents kung yung mga estudyante are not turning in homework as well. So, mas madaling i-monitor yung turning in ng, ng homework ng mga, ng mga students. So, I think those are the three things na advantage why I'm using the Google Classroom. Second na ginagamit ko sa pag-deliver ng instruction is Zoom. So dahil nga ang estudyante ko is 22 students maximum, mas madaling mag-create uh, ng meeting sessions with 22 students. Uh, you can conduct like video chat with the students. Para din siyang regular classroom. Ang goal is to make the virtual learning as close as possible to the actual classroom experience ng mga estudyante. So through Zoom, through Zoom, you can ask questions to participate. You can ask the students to participate in class discussions. I also use the breakout rooms, kung saan I can assign four students para magkaroon ng small group discussions. Kasi during virtual learning, it's also important na mga estudyante magkaroon ng socialization with other kids. Kasi it's been months na hindi nila na meet yung mga estudyante, yung mga classmates nila. So, as much as possible, create avenues to uh, Zoom classes na where any students can interact with other students and teachers as well. So, magandang feature yun ng Zoom. Then, mag pwede ka mag-create ng breakout rooms. And you can also provide intervention during those breakout rooms. Kapag meron ka rin mga um, special ed students or you're working with other teachers, you can also invite them. So it's possible na mayroong two teachers in a Zoom class but uh, you can work together to, to help all other students. While using Zoom, ang um, important uh, expectation na ginagamit ko rin ay dapat clear talaga lahat. Sometimes 
you need to you need to inform your students that they have their video on, microphone on, of course, brain on, right? So ito yung mga possible na expectations. You have to be very clear kapag nasa Zoom class yung mga students. Here's another one. Video off, mic on, brain on. Or it can be mic off. Third, third method na ginagamit ko sa delivery ng instruction is notability. For example, in this question, find a solution of this system. I can't, as a math teacher, I can't imagine explaining this to 24 kids just by verbal explanation. Right? This requires multiple steps. So with the use of notability, I can show the work step by step. And then I can pause. I can ask the students kung ano yung next step na gagawin nila. So you can do para sa whiteboard or blackboard na, na pwedeng gamitin uh, in explaining a math problem. So for math especially, uh, I think it is a must na magkaroon ng notability or writing capability para explain yung math problem sa mga students. So again, ang ginagamit ko is Google Classroom, Zoom, and Notability. So those are the three things. Again, there's tens of resources, pero dito yung top three na, na ginagamit ko sa, sa classroom. Yung sa Notability rin, uh, yung mga solutions na ginawa ninyo, you can save them through PDF. So pwede rin yun yung i-share yung PDF sa Google Classroom. So that students can also revisit those step-by-step uh, -step solutions sa uh, the problem. Kasi let's face it, kapag uh, virtual learning, sometimes um, students are having problem with internet. So hindi ni or minsan sa mic or sound system, hindi nila maintindihan. So through this PDF, ang mga students ay pwedeng uh, balikan yung steps so they can fully understand how to solve uh, a problem. Okay. So again, Google Classroom, Zoom, at saka Notability. Assessment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think two things na kailangan common sa lahat ng teachers, specifically sa subject or grade level, is common curriculum, at the same time, common assessment. Although I highly suggest na during virtual learning, ang focus talaga is on learning and feedback less on high stake assessment. Kasi one thing that you don't want to happen is to create um, stress sa mga estudyante. Kasi virtual learning, marami ng stress is at home, right? Um, creating a high stake assessment will create to even more um, stresses sa ating students. So again, uh, come up with assessments, pero try to focus on the learning and providing feedback to the students. Less emphasis sa, sa high stake assessment. Here in Singapore, also there are so many tools na pwedeng gamitin sa assessment, pero ito yung three, top three tools na ginagamit ko. The first one is Khan Academy, aside from the Zelto Academy, uh, IXL, and also uh, last month, May, nung May lang namin ginamit yung third one, Elastic, Khan Academy, IXL, and Egelastic. I'm going to go through each one. Khan Academy. Khan Academy is free. Uh, meron Khan Academy sa math, English, social studies, even Spanish or uh, different uh, languages. It's all free. So, ang advantages ng Khan Academy ay pwede kang mag-create mag ng class create ng class para sa sujanti mo, and then you can assign uh, classwork, you can assign videos, you can assign uh, quizzes, you can assign tests, and then you can monitor their progress. Yun yung importante kasi. You can always monitor the, the progress of the students, and it's easier also to get feedback. For example, sa, sa screen na to, I just covered the names of my students. So these are some of the quizzes that I assigned to the students. And then you can see the scores right away. 
And another important uh, element ng Khan Academy is you can go through the questions na commonly missed by students. Because when you're, when you're giving an assessment, of course, you have to go back to the questions that are commonly missed para ma, ma intervene yung misunderstanding sa, sa mga math problems na yon. So that's why I use Khan Academy. Madali siyang, uh, mag, madali mag-assign ng assignments or quizzes and you can also give uh, immediate feedback and you can address the misconceptions right away by looking at the errors na na-encounter ng mga, ng mga students. Also, when assigning uh, quizzes, if you want to assign different but similar questions to my estudiante, you can also do that. Kasi yan yung, yan yung one uh, problem na encounter namin when it comes to assessments. Uh, the authenticity ng result ng assessments. Kasi with the use of phones, Estudiante can easily transfer the or send the answers to other students, right? But with Khan Academy, Khan Academy has a solution to that. You can create questions na similar, different, different but similar questions uh, for all the students. So hindi madaling magkopyahan or hindi uh, hindi mayirap na magsend ng uh, answers to other students. So. That's why I use Khan Academy. And just like Rob said, uh, through Khan Academy as well, you can monitor the progress of the students. Actually, I've been using Khan Academy since I moved here in Singapore in 2016. And uh, you can monitor the progress of the students from August to June. And you will see how they improve when they enter your classroom and when they leave your class uh, in June. So first is Khan Academy. Second is IXL. IXL also ay hindi lang sa math. Uh, kasama yung language arts, science, social studies, Spanish, and different subjects. IXL is also free. Uh, pero kapag uh, walang subscription, limited lang yung resources. I think may limit uh, na problems na pwedeng gawin yung mga estudyante. So, for our students, mayroong kaming subscription. So, unlimited yung access sa, sa IXL. But you can also access it for free. Yun nga lang, limited yung access ng mga estudyante sa, sa mga questions. Again, just like with Khan Academy, you can monitor students' progress through the dashboard. Uh, like for this result, as of today, uh, 103,000 questions ang na-answer ng ating mga estudyante and 396 skills yung na-master nila. And they spend about 1,000 hours within the whole year, this 2019-2020. Uh, so it gives you analytics diagnostic and uh, feedback to the students as well. Kung gusto mong tingnan yung um, specific results ng estudyante and provide feedback for each student, uh, you have that resources as well. So ito, I cover the names of the students. So these are the number of questions answered by the kids. It, ilan yung skills na na-practice nila, how many skills they na-proficient sila or they mastered. So again, it provides a lot of information to progress ng students uh, when they enter your class and then leave your class. And the third one that I use is Egelastic. So um, Egelastic is also free, but uh, two weeks ago, we decided to subscribe. So we uh, purchased kami. Medyo, medyo may kamahalan ang Egelastic. It's, uh, I think, $100 per, per teacher. So, but you can still access it for free. Again, limited yung uh, access mode to create assessments. And just like with the two uh, assessment tools, you can also create classes. And you can monitor student progress. Again, if you notice, lahat ng assessment tools na ginagamit ko ay mayroong commonalities. One is I can create a class for my students. Second, 
I can uh, access the I can access and monitor the progress of the students. Kasi yun yung important ng importance ng uh, assessment tools, right? Uh, instead of grading the papers by hand, these tools give you the information right away, and you can focus on providing feedback and uh, monitor yung progress ng sujante. So when you're choosing assessment tools, I think yun yung main consideration. Can you create a class for your students? Can you monitor the progress of your students? Kasi kung hindi mo monitor yung progress ng students, hindi accurate yung pag-provide ng feedback sa kanila. Okay? Fourth consideration uh, sa pag-transition sa virtual learning is communication. Um, I know right now, I think the Philippines, uh, when it comes to enrollment, I've been seeing uh, posts on Facebook or uh, text, right? So yun yung mga ibang communication tools na ginagamit sa Philippines uh, para sa virtual learning, I think. Uh, pero dito sa Singapore, we're using email, again, Google Classroom, and Google Hangouts para mag-communicate sa students and uh and parents again three things lang yung ginagamit ko uh, when it comes to communicating to students and parents just like i've said i've been using google classroom google hangouts is like uh, a chat room and meron din kaming advisory class as i mentioned i have an advisory class with 12 students so beginning of the day I meet with my students from 9.15 through 9.30. Kasi when it comes to virtual learning, it's really important to make sure that your students are doing fine. Well-being of the students is a priority. So through advisory class, I can communicate kung anong kailangan gawin or All right. Let's move on to virtual teaching and learning tips. Aside from those four, just like I said, the um, first one is the um, priority dapat is well-being of students and not just students but also teachers. I highly encourage the administrators to embody empathy. Try to lessen uh, teacher workload. Show virtual support and develop all channels of communication. It's it's really important to check in with your teachers how they're doing, right? Um, teachers can also connect with students on a human level. Kasi nga virtual learning, uh, but also spend time to ask how your students are doing. Laugh with your students during virtual learning. Uh, don't be too serious when facilitating a class. Dahil, again, well-being of students is our priority. This year, ito yung uh, schedule namin. Our class starts at 9.15 and ends at 3. So every day, ang students meron lang silang four classes. I think during the discussion with uh, Ray and uh, Sir Edwin today, I think they mentioned about 40 minute class, something like that. In our school here in Singapore, each class is 55 minutes. Again, we start first with advisory class from 9.15 through 9.30. And the purpose of this is to build connection with your 12 students. Ang aming advisory class ay 12 students lang, so you can uh, build connection with them. And then also during advisory, every Thursday, Meron kami ginagawang well-being survey through Google Classroom um, to monitor student stresses, uh, ano yung mga problems and encounter ng mga students. Well, sometimes they need to, to talk to their counselors or things like that. So, yung advisory check-in for 15 minutes is really important to make sure we uh, build connection with our students and we monitor the well-being of our students as well. And so again, 9.15 to 3 o'clock ang aming classes. And if you notice here, we also have one hour lunch. One hour lunch, I think, is really important as well. 
uh, we can use this on our lunch as a family bonding. Because um, I think Ray mentioned that there's sometimes merong uh, three students ang some family, uh, but having lunch together every day uh, it's a huge factor then para sa well-being ng estudyante. So as much as possible, create a schedule. Then sabi ni, I think sabi ni, ni DepEd Secretary is it's based on the schools kung paano nila iset up yung schedule nila, things like that. So you guys have flexibility. So as much as possible, create a an hour lunch for all the students and that can be used as a bonding time ng family and try to have break time as well here we have 10 minute breaks for students because the students need to need a break right they need to use the restroom they need to stretch important yun kasi uh, i can't imagine myself also sitting in this uh office from 9 15 to 3 right so a 10 minute break is really helpful para students can have a break and stretch as well and another important um, part ng aming schedule is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, again, you meet with your advisory teacher. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, students have an option to schedule a follow-up with their core subject teachers. For example, for math, meron kaming 2.35 to 3 schedule. Uh, if students need extra help, the students can join the Zoom class. And uh, there's three teachers in our grade level. And it's not a large group. So usually you have about five kids needing help or needing extra help sa kanilang math homework. So that's the embedded time to provide intervention uh, for the students. Just like Rob said, uh, try to lessen the schedule of your teachers. For me, magaan lang yung klasiko. Uh, on day one, meron lang akong two classes, uh, 55 minutes each. So again, my first class is advisory, 9.15 to 9.30. And then, ang first class ko is 10.35 10 to 11.30. And then, ang last class ko, the second class, is 1.35 to 2.30. So, mas magaan lang yung, magaan lang yung teaching load. And that gives the teachers opportunity to to work, collaborate with other teachers uh, online. Because during this virtual learning, let's face it, uh, teachers need more time to prepare. And also, we need to be, prior, yung well-being pa rin ng teachers, not just the students, yung priority. So as much as possible, administrators try to create schedule na hindi gaanong mabigat sa schedule ng mga teachers. Uh, Provide a schedule kung saan they can work together with other teachers uh, online. Okay? And on day two, I have three classes. So we have two rotating days. Day one, I have two classes. And then day two, I have uh, three classes. So it would be nice if administrators can develop a schedule uh, similar to this. Uh, it will be a good thing for the teachers. I think it's really important. Uh, build relationships and the learning will come. Um, this year, mas madali lang yung building relationships kasi we transitioned to virtual learning in March. So that means from August to March, we already established relationship with the kids. But for this school year 2020, 2021 in the Philippines, it's more difficult because you're getting new students, right? So beginning, I will say the first week of school, try to build the relationship with the students uh, first. Young learning, learning will follow after you build the relationship with the kids. And also as much as possible when you're doing uh, virtual classes, uh, try to engage the class into smaller group discussions. Again, just like Craig said, laugh with them, share your stories. Uh, usually for, for the first five minutes or your do now activities, 
that's a good way to share your experiences in the morning or in the afternoon since classes start uh, at 9.15 for us. I always get a chance to walk from, from 6 to 7 in the morning, and I share my experiences with the kids, and the students love that. Okay, You need to build that relationship with the kids during virtual learning. And again, the first week, you spend that time, build that relationship with the kids, and learning will just follow. Third, I think it's also important. Uh, structure creates connection. Uh, it's really important to have a structure when you're having a virtual class. Uh, for me, I use the PLC. It's okay to be predictable. Uh, for hacking class, I have used the, I think I use 15, 20, 10, five rule. I'm gonna go over that into detail uh, later on. Second, less is more. Uh, since we're doing virtual learning, don't try to compensate the things that you cover during live classes. Don't give homework that will take two hours for the kids. As much as possible, as much as possible, 30 minutes of homework or less, that's the recommended amount of work for the students uh, in each class. But uh, again, less is more. And the third one, give clear instruction. Here's the sample a uh, math virtual learning that I use for my math class. And I try to use this format, just like Rob said, as much as possible, try to be predictable. That way students know what to expect when they join your class. So I use 10, 20, 25. So for the first 10 minutes during Zoom, that's the time for the students to join the class. And when they enter the classroom, they start with the do now activity right away. Uh, they find on Google Classroom or the document that I screen share on my laptop. So it's the first 10 minutes. And then the next 20 minutes is based on explicit uh, instruction, or I also do group work. When I do group work, I send them to breakout rooms. Breakout rooms can be assigned before they join the class, or you can also do it automatically. So that's the 20 minutes. And then the last five minutes, make sure that you close and provide a synthesis of your lesson. After the breakout rooms, ask your students, are there some questions that they encounter during the uh, group activity? Also, during the group activities, you can join the breakout rooms. That way you can help um, small group discussions. It's easier to provide feedback to smaller groups. So instead of doing uh, the large group, you can go to the groups that you assign and then provide feedback to the kids. So again, I use 10, 20, 25. 10 minutes for the check-in and do now, 20 minutes for class discussion, 20 minutes for uh, breakout session, and then five minutes for the synthesis of lesson. I've also mentioned that you need to have norms. It's really important that the expectations are clear when facilitating a virtual uh, class. So these are the things that I use uh, when we do chat and video conferencing. When they enter the class, make sure that the, the, the microphones are mute, right? And those are a couple of things. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but that's the sample norm that I use when having chat and video conferencing. This is our day one of uh, virtual learning here in Singapore. So it so happens that this day should be an assessment for our class. So instead of giving an assessment, uh, we use this day as a review. So this is the 10 minute activity. So when they join the Zoom class, this is the screen that they can see right away. So they can begin with the work. So that's the first 10 minutes. And then after the do now activities, this is the review station. 
for the review stations, by the way, this slide is shown on Google Classroom. So students have access to this. Uh, so this is a menu for the students to choose from. Since this is a chapter review, if students are struggling or needing more help with determining the number of solutions, then they can use the station number two. If they need to use word problems, then they can go station six. So we try to give um, different options for the kids to prepare for the, for the assessment. And this combination is a combination of uh, worksheets, uh, notes. I also have here some Celso Academy videos. By the way, the videos that I created on YouTube are the videos that I'm using in my virtual uh, classroom. Because sometimes students need to go back to those videos to relearn and refresh their memory on how to solve the questions. So these videos are really helpful for the, for the students. And that's about 20 minutes. And then I also assign them for the breakout rooms. And just like I've said, you have to be very specific with the instructions. So for the classwork, they can only spend 20 minutes and then they can use Desmos calculator. They have to submit work on Google Classroom and they have to rejoin the whole class at 1020. You have to be very specific what to do, what will happen in that 20 minute period. Also, I use this. So when the students are in breakout rooms, I want them to have a group discussion I want them to answer the questions together as a group. So this is a breakout room expectations that I normally use with my students. Fourth one, patience is a virtue. No matter how we prepare in this virtual learning, it could go the other way, right? So you're going to find that some things don't translate well into the new online setting. And that's okay if you mess up on your virtual learning, right? Um, but of course, we need to really prepare for the virtual learning experience. And try not to be too hard on yourself, okay? Um, again, teaching in a virtual learning environment requires a different skill set. So it's important that you're attending different webinars, trainings. There are so many available trainings that you guys could use. But also don't overwhelm yourself with the different uh, tools available tools that you can use. Number five, I think this is the last one. Uh, embrace new opportunities and learn new techniques. This is an opportunity for you to learn uh, digital technologies or different software or different strategies that you could use in facilitating a virtual uh, classroom. This year, I learned so much when it comes to creating uh, assessments and uh, facilitating online classes as well. And it's a great opportunity. So just embrace it, embrace this change. I have, uh, it's already uh, 4 p.m. I have, uh, I will be sharing how to create Google Classroom uh, setup for teachers and also Zoom. I will be posting them on YouTube so it's easier for you to follow the step-by-step -step, uh, procedures. But just to go quickly on how to set up your Google Classroom for teachers, you simply click the plus icon and then you create class, as simple as that. And then you can name your classes and then you can just share the class code to your students and then they join the class. That's just three steps. So again, you can create a course through uh, Google Classroom and then share the class code to your students and students can join. Also, if you want to manually type the email of your students, then you can uh, do that as well. Thank you for watching. Uh, I didn't give shout outs, but we have uh, a lot of viewers as well so i'm gonna spend some time to say hi to them uh thank you for watching gilman tess 
Jobel, Adrian, Ryan, James, Adrian, Dolores, Ryan de los Santos, thank you for watching. Eileen, Dina Solis, Betty Marie, Albutra, Tess, Judy, thank you for watching. Rachel, Isabel, and uh, Sister Ryda, thank you for watching. Um, if you guys have um, specific questions, please uh, type on the comment section um, next week, next Saturday. It will be a Q&A approach. Um, so if you want to know specific things before Saturday, uh, I will be advertising the uh, next webinar uh, next week. So send us your questions so I can address them in the next uh, webinar. I hope that you learned something uh, from today's uh, webinar. I will be sharing this slideshow as well to everyone who wants to uh, use this. It includes a uh, step-by-step procedure on how to set up your Google Classroom as well, okay? So again, uh, the learning targets that we have for today are these slides. I hope that you learned some uh, ideas for today. You can uh, email me at salesacademy at gmail.com if you have questions. Um, those who need um, certificates, we can also provide you with certificates. If you are interested, you can uh, email me or I know some of you type your names in the comment section. So thank you. All right, again, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope to see you again uh, on Wednesday for our math session and Saturday next week for our Q&A approach on teaching and learning. Thank you and have a great day, everyone.